These three young people all worked for Panda Express. I'm sure you've all had some of that delicious Panda Express food in your <laughs> airport travels. Um, Tucson is not well known for, for big immigration raids, but for some reason um, there was a big raid on Panda Express in Tucson, not too far from where uh, I live, about a mile away. Um, it, it all started, um, this young woman, Marlene, that you see here, uh, she had been working at Panda Express full time for four years and she made so little money that she couldn't feed her child. So she made the mistake of applying for food stamps for him, little Freddie. Um, and she used the fake social security number that she used to work at Panda Express. And that's how she got caught. You know, that number bounced back from the, um, the DES, Department of Economic Security. And so the state conducted an investigation, Department of Public Services, um, par par Department of Public Safety. They also go after drug dealers and they're the highway patrol. They're kind of big time. Uh, big time police people. So they launched something like a six month investigation of Marlin, and I have a stack of papers this high, the amount of time and effort they took into uh, investigating this young woman. Um, and they uh, listed every wage she had earned from Panda Express. I think over four years it was less than $50,000, not surprising. Um, so they planned a, a raid and um, they also, at the same time, they became suspicious of the other Panda Express workers. It turned out at that particular store, 12 out of 14 were undocumented. Um, the employees said that you know the, the uh, employer was wholly complicit, but of course the employer denied it in you know in knowing that they were undocumented. But what happened was early that morning, um, the day of the raid, they went to Marlin's trailer on the south side of Tucson, the poor side of town, and they conducted this thing where you know all the car the police cars came up the sirens they banged on the door of her trailer at dawn she was asleep in bed with her little infant son boy eight months old and um, luckily she was living with family the police uh, these people hauled her out of there they wouldn't even allow her to change out of her pajamas the child was screaming and wrenched from her arms and her sister took the little boy and she did not see that little boy again for five months um, these other two young people, Omar and Araceli, they also had children. And among the 12 Panda Express workers who were arrested, uh, there were 12 young children. Um, there was a raid later that day at the store itself. They came right before the lunch rush and um, surrounded the, you know, in the parking lot next to the mattress store and so forth, all these police officers. And they hauled out all the Panda Express workers in their little their little outfits and their hats and took them down to, um, to uh, Border Patrol and they were charged with a felony, felony impersonation of another human being and um, they had a, a really great lawyer so they got off on a misdemeanor but once they settled their criminal case, this is the typical trajectory, then they had to go to the detention center because they were undocumented immigrants. So um, most of them were deported pretty quickly. These three had all been brought to the United States as young children, and they all three had very good, um, very good lawyers. And Araceli, it turns out, went to elementary school with my daughter. And when I interviewed Araceli later, she had a picture of my daughter in her house in her fourth grade yearbook, which was a pretty amazing thing. They were about the same age, and it was around the time my daughter had gotten just gotten her college degree, and Araceli had just been released from jail. So that was a very uh, wrenching thing for me to think she was one of the little kids I used to see on my local playground. Anyway, they all eventually were permitted to stay and they're still in the United States now, but I have a nice quote from um, Marlene. I went to visit her five months after this had all happened. She was back at home and her child was terrified of her. I sat with her in her kitchen. The grandmother was holding Freddie. Marlene was there, I was there. and. Freddie was looking like this, really wary and scared, would not allow his own mother to touch him. Um, you know, eventually it worked out and he took to his mother again, but who knows, you know, what kind of psychic wound that would uh, make on a small child. And a nice thing that, a quote that I had from Marlene at the time, she said, they took us away from our children, separated us from our families. I will never forget. It was only for working they treated it as a crime.